Alright, so here is a little video about the Dirac delta function. Now the reason that I have function in quotations is because it's not actually a function at all. It's what's called a distribution or a generalized function, but it is not actually a function, and that's because of the infinity business, but uh, I'm not really a mathematician, so I'm not going to go into the details of that. Just a quick introduction of one of the ways you can sort of define it. From what I understand, this is the uh, standard way of defining it. If you take an exponential, like uh, e to the x squared kind of deal, or negative x squared, maybe there's some constants in there, with area equal to 1, and you keep playing with those constants until it gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier, if you take the limit as the skinniness approaches infinity, or zero, however you want to think of that, you have this infinitely thin line that's it's infinitely tall and it's, it's one-dimensional and has an area of one. If that sounds kind of weird to you, well that's exactly why it's not a function. Now what does that area equal to one have to do with it? Well, uh, so here is the delta function, this is the, the symbol. If it's just delta of x, well x minus, in that case a would be zero, so you would have it right in the middle, right on the origin. A more general way to put it would be delta of x minus a, it just shifts it a along the x-axis, and you have this infinitely thin line, of course this goes up and up forever, I don't have forever to write, but it has an area equal to one, so that means if we integrate the delta function, x minus a, and we can use any limits we want as long as it includes a, like as long as they surround the point a, so a minus some number, a plus some number, that's going to equal 1. And that's the definition of this generalized function. It's obvious to see that it's 0 everywhere. So if we integrated from negative infinity all the way up to anywhere before a, all the way up to a minus epsilon, that would have equaled 0. And similarly, if we integrate anywhere past a, so a plus epsilon, to infinity, to positive infinity, that would give us zero. All of the area of this generalized function is located at the point a. So as long as that is inside of our uh, limits of integration, it's going to equal one. And of course, you can multiply a constant in the front, so if you have three times the delta, then the area would be three, uh, and that just follows from our integration rules. We can just pull three out. Now, that's not very exciting. Why would that even be defined, let alone useful? Well, the, the interesting part of this, and the, the, the useful part, is if you multiply some other function by the delta and then integrate. Everything that is useful about the, the delta happens inside of an integral. So, for example, if we integrate I'm just going to go from negative infinity to infinity, but as long as the limits include wherever the delta is, then you're good. So we integrate some function of x, doesn't matter what it is, the times the delta at some point, that is just going to equal f at the delta. Now why is that the case? Hopefully it's straightforward to see that when you multiply these two together, we know that the delta is zero everywhere except for at that point, so the, the multiple of these two together is just going to be zero at every point that isn't a. So similarly as before, we can throw away everything that really isn't isn't the point a and we can take the limit as epsilon approaches zero if we or sorry yeah epsilon approaches zero if we want to and that is just as equally valid because the only thing that matters is that one point and when you take the limit the only thing that's going to be left over is f at that one point and we know that when we integrate the delta we're going to get one so we can essentially just pull out the f at a, because everything else is just going to be zero when we multiply them together. This, 
of the delta x minus a times dx. Well, we already know this goes to 1. And like I said, if you want to be fancy, you can take the limits. So what it does, what the delta does, is it serves to pick out the value of the function at the location of the delta inside of an integral. So once again, to restate that, if you're integrating a function times a Dirac delta at some point, it serves to pick out the value of this function at the point of the delta. How does it all work? A little bit of this footwork over here. Not very complicated though. You can generalize this to uh, three-dimensional delta. Uh, it's the same kind of idea as this. Um, let's keep it to, to one-dimensional just for this definition here. Well, uh, I hope that helped and I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.